Good morning. Welcome to Santa Cruz Parish. Today, we celebrate the 34th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the Solemnity of Lord Jesus Christ, our King. Our Mass today is being offered for the soul of Lily Contreras. Our celebrant is Father David. Please stand now as we begin this Mass. The King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord forever is true. Let us uh, enter in with uh, gratitude to Christ our King, our Lord and King, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Give him praise and honor and worship and open the doors of our hearts to his love and to his grace and to his mercy. This morning, the intention is for Lily Contreras, for her eternal happiness, also for all the souls in purgatory. And we remember also uh, two other special intentions, James Kelly and also uh, Gerard Griswood, who died in Ireland, and this is his anniversary. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is, is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render you med your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep as a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they are scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please respond. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Besides restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ is the first fruit. Then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then himself 
then the son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Father David that is to come. According to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me naked and you clothed me, ill and you cared for me, in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you accursed, into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. <coughs> for I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of my brothers, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, uh, today we celebrate the, on this last Sunday of the ordinary time and of the liturgical year, we celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And there is an image presented on our bulletin that is a very beautiful one, but sometimes that image can be a little bit frightening as we uh, bow down before 
uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But the true, the reality is that Jesus is King, not like the kings or the leaders or the presidents or oh, those in charge in this world. But he is the good shepherd. He is the shepherd king. And that is very different from our usual image of leaders and of kings in our world today. And uh, that is, I think, always the way with the teaching of Jesus. It's different. The kingdom of God is not of this world. It is of a different uh, attitude and a different mentality for, from our own human ways of thinking. He is Lord because we were created in him. He is Lord because we were saved by him. And he is Lord because we will be judged by him. And the Lord is the good shepherd. The final judgment that we have in today's gospel is um, very well known to all of us and it is easy to understand. You have sheep and goats, one on the left, one on the right, and the good ones come into the eternal happiness of heaven, the others are banished. The surprising thing of course is that both the good and the bad are surprised that they are mentioned, that they are people who took care of the poor and needy, who fed the hungry and the thirsty, who clothed the naked and went to visit those in prison. And they ask him, when did we see you do that? And Jesus identifies with the poor and the needy and all those who are in difficulties in this world. And that is what we are judged on. That is very different again to the, our ways of judging. Even when we come up to judge serious things in our world in court cases, we have uh, advocates and lawyers on one side and on the other and we have a, a jury uh, judging and it can be very complicated. We are experiencing that in the, the uh, questioning of, of the elections at present in our country, that it is a complicated business and not easy to follow, not easy to understand. But the last judgment, the judgment of Jesus is very easy to understand. It is simply, how we treat one another, how we treat the least of our brothers. It is that least of the brothers that Jesus uh, highlights and identifies with himself and it is how we treat them that d determines where we go to the left, whether we stay on the left or whether we stay on the right and where we go to heaven or to eternal punishment, to eternal life or to eternal punishment. We uh, know that this gospel is not only a, a very simple and a very beautiful explanation of ju the judgment, the final judgment, but it is also a call to conversion, a call to think of the poor and the needy and to examine our conscience and to see how we are doing on these things. Uh, when have I helped the poor? When have I fed the hungry? When have I visited them in prison? When have I helped the sick? All those things are a, a, a challenge to us. And even if we have done it, we cannot be complacent about it. We cannot just pride ourselves in doing it. That is an ongoing uh, t test of our fidelity to Christ, that we continue to reach out and to help others. 
So my dear friends, I think it would be very good for us to try to examine our conscience and to see how we are doing these works of mercy and maybe to ask ourselves, did I do anything this past week? And what will I do for this coming week? How will I do these works of mercy in my life today? That humble service is the only thing that matters at the Last Supper. That is the great thing to keep in mind. And St. John of the Cross, the great Carmelite mystic and leader in prayer, he does not tell us uh, what, uh, how we will be judged, whether we'll be judged on having mystical experiences or being very pious or being famous or extraordinary or anything like that. He tells us on the last day we will be judged on love, on love of the least of the brothers and sisters of Jesus. Let us renew our faith and our commitment to this great task, this ongoing task of our lives and the ongoing task that will bring us to eternal happiness. I believe in, in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from the heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored, adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers of petition with great confidence in the, the goodness of God, the intercession of Jesus, our King and our Good Shepherd. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our shepherds in the church, that they may diligently look after and tend God's sheep, bringing back the strayed, binding up the injured, healing the sick, shepherding us rightly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all sovereignties, authorities, and powers that are in opposition to God may be brought under subjugation to Christ the King, that God may be all in all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who know in what the final judgment of God will consist, may be the first to treat Christ and the hungry, 
the thirsty, the stranger, the sick, and the imprisoned with compassion and reverence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who have the Lord as our shepherd, who want for nothing under his care, may reach out to those who do not yet know God as Savior and friend, leading them to Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are going through a dark valley of sickness, poverty, oppression, or grief may feel the guiding press of the divine shepherd's staff, leading them to restful waters and anointing of joy and grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed ones, including Lily Contreras, that Christ, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep, may bring all who belong to him, rejoicing into his Father's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for our country that uh, the Lord may ease the differences and to keep us united in goodness and in service of one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, source of all blessings, we thank you especially for giving us your Son, our Lord and Savior, King of the universe. Grant that as we honor him today, we may open our hearts more and more to his teaching. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. and sisters that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of his hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice for which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray 
that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, O Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule. He might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, our husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Teresa and John of the Cross, little Therese, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to Lily Contreras, for whom this Mass has been offered, also for James Kelly and for Gerard Gricewood, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now, on you stay, Queen Tolis Vega Tamudi, Miserere Nobis. On you stay, Queen Tolis 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you, you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Yes. 
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And before the final blessing, let me uh, just remind you that there's a little error in the bulletin for Thanksgiving Day. The masses, it says in the bulletin, masses at 10 a.m. and 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. The 8 a.m. will be a regular mass, but the 10 of 10 a.m. mass is restricted. It is live stream mass, so it is not open to the public. But we have 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. We have a 10 o'clock mass also in the school field in Spanish. So 8 and 10 are open. And then the 10 o'clock in the church is the live stream. Am I clear? <laughs> or am I confusing you? <laughs> okay, thank you for your presence and for your participation in this mass here in church and on the live stream, wherever you are. And I thank our lector, Mark, our technician, Peter, our leader of our choir, Lourdes, and your helpers. And for, uh, okay, and for our bell ringer too, who does things very nice and quietly there. The Lord, be, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lift up your gaze.